There we go. The Lord is risen, hallelujah. Welcome to the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Maggie has a sad announcement to uh, share with us from Calabasi. Maggie, I've got it. Yes, on this beautiful Easter morning, I'm sorry I have to tell you this news. I received an email, and Nixon informed me that one of the teachers has been murdered. The gangs have made it up to the village of Calabas, and Nixon is frantic. Because he is known all over the village, he's the one that everybody comes to, and so there's a target on his back. He is hoping and praying he can get his wife and children out. And so he sent through to me this message. Um, I know we have a wall, I know we have a gate. But if they get in there, the gangs can starve them out. They are frantic. Now, I'd like to put something to you I haven't spoken to Aquam yet, but I'm very, very concerned for Nixon's safety. If I think we allow them to close the school, I mean, they only have May and June and then they're finished. If we allow them to close the school and ask if they can let the teachers try to get to the Dominican and be protected there, and we make up some way that we can send their wages to them so that they have money while they're there, maybe we can ward off another murder because they're out to get the people that have money. Now, in Harold's memory, we have $4,000. And I can't think of any other way that he would rather see that money used than to give support to these teachers and to Nixon. So if I could see a show of hands, if you're all in agreement with that, I will notify ACWAM and see what we can put in place. Is everybody in favor of that? Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Well, on this Easter Sunday with that news, we, we have the hope because it is Easter and Jesus has the victory and Jesus is with us. And also to, to how shall I say, take refuge in another place is, how shall I say, a tradition that the church has done uh, before in various areas of the world where it's uh, a lot of difficulty they move and shift and take refuge, and then they return again to the work. Um, and so we, our prayers are with them as they do that, and our prayers are hopeful that they, they are able to take refuge. It was in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's, that's good. And, and to, yeah, you know, sort of with Christ and Christ's people. I have to be thankful for uh, people taking refuge in another place because I wouldn't be here. My parents met because the Norwegian mission took refuge with the Canadian mission whilst there was fighting going on. So good things can come from that, I like to think. Well, we begin the Easter season and the Easter season is uh, 50 days of celebration. Next week is called Rises Pascalius, or Bright Sunday, or Holy Humor Sunday, where we, uh, God has the la best laugh on the devil. And we celebrate through Easter. We are a people of faith. And now we have our greeting, which will be on the screen. 
our traditional Easter greeting. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us join in our call to worship, which is on the screen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now we have our responsive opening prayer. Let us pray. On this day, you won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ. For us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us join in singing Jesus Christ is risen today in Voices United 155, or it's on the screen. Praise 
God has greeted us, let us take a few moments to greet one another and wish Happy Easter. Happy Easter. finished our greetings. <laughs> well, as we're in the Lord's presence, we're aware of our sins and our failures, and so we offer a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Living Lord, when we stand before the empty tomb, we don't always feel the joy of resurrection. We feel fear, doubt, and distrust. We feel empty. Forgive the fear that paralyzes us at the brink of a new life. Forgive our doubt of your love. Forgive our distrust of your surprising, joyous plan. Fill our emptiness with your glorious light. Raise us to abundant new life for the glory of your name. Amen. Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Sisters and brothers, Christ has forgiven us our sins. Christ has called us to new life. Thanks be to God who forgives us, loves us, and calls us to begin again. Now we will be having a solo by Paul, Rise and Shine, this little light of mine. Then following that, we'll have a, an Easter story. It's a, a video. And then the choir will be singing, Because He Lives. And then Lottie will um, read our scripture readings. And uh, at the end of the second reading, we've got Mary doing a, 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 the Risen. It's a new piece, is it? And then... Uh, following the gospel reading, she, she will do In the Garden. And In the Garden is from that passage of Scripture. And then I'll be back to talk about garden surprises. <laughs> so, Paul. Now, I'm not expecting everybody to know the first part of this song, but you better be singing in the second part. I'm challenging you. Little children, they're not worried Cause you still got lots of time There's no need in walking backwards Turn around, go rise and shine Cause your load always seems heavy And you're always left behind Pick yourself up from the ground Jump right back up and rise and shine Rise and shine the years of all Shine your light on through the day Makes no difference what they tell you And ride up and have your say May the good old friend he loves you And your tender strength will find Even though the world may use you Get it now, go rise and shine Look at how they did poor Jesus How they nailed him to a cross But he died up there on Calvary So the world would not be lost so no matter how they treat you, if they slap you in the face, just remember Jesus loves you on the cross he could be laid. Rise and shine in the early morning, shine your light all through the day. Makes no difference what they tell you, stand right up and have your say. Cause the good Lord said he loves you, and through him you straight go find. Even though the world may use you, get it now, go rise and shine. Let it shine, 
This last Friday was the hardest day I ever lived. All of the disciples, myself included, were in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. We were all wondering why we were in the garden in the middle of the night. I mean, I'm usually in bed before 10. Jesus was sweating and praying like he had no time left. He asked us to pray with him, and we did for like 15 minutes. Then everyone was asleep, and James was snoring like a hippo. What? It was way past my bedtime. Jesus woke us up a couple of times, but I hardly remember what he said. Then, all of a sudden, everything started. All of the guards and religious leaders led by Judas came up to us. All I remember was waking up confused, everyone yelling, Peter was flailing around with a sword, and ears were being cut off. I only cut one ear off. Besides, Jesus put it back on the guy's head. Where did Peter get a sword anyway? I mean, who in their right mind gave it to him? He said what? Jesus calmed everyone down, but then they arrested him. And we ran for our lives. I suppose I knew that Jesus would be taken, but it still scared me so much. After I gathered my wits, the guys and I went to where Jesus was being accused. It was ridiculous. Men started spewing lies. Men paid by the Pharisees came forward to testify against Jesus. It was all a big lie. John was pretty scared. Yeah, I heard John was terrified. Are you kidding me? James wet his tunic and ran away, and Peter pretended like he didn't even know us. Regardless, Jesus was finishing being tried by the Sanhedrin when the rooster crowed. Huh, rooster crowing doesn't sound familiar. Christ had told Peter that Peter would deny him. Okay, okay, like I said, it wasn't really the best day for any of us. The priest handed over Jesus to the Romans, saying that they wanted him to be killed. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, didn't know what to do. They stripped my son and beat him till he bled. They put a cross on his back and led him and two thieves up a hill called Golgotha. They nailed him to the cross and crucified him. He was crying to heaven, Father, why have you forsaken me? As Jesus passed away, the sky grew dark, the earth shook, and the temple veil tore into two. I heard a Roman soldier say, surely this was the Son of God. Mary Magdalene and I went to the tomb where he was buried on the day after the Sabbath. We were both crying and weeping. We barely said a word all the way there. When we arrived at the tomb, we could not believe what we saw. An angel was at the tomb and told us Jesus has risen. We ran back and told them all. Then Peter and John ran to see for themselves. That John sure is fast. He beat me there by a mile. Well, everyone's faster than Peter. We couldn't believe that he was alive. I didn't expect it. To be fair, he told us like a hundred times to expect this. Oh yeah. We were back at the house that evening and Jesus showed up. We all worshiped God and spent a few more days with Jesus. Then he ascended into heaven. We were lost apart from God, but God came to us. Jesus died to pay our price. He defeated death and rose again. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen.
the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. O oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us today. Amen. Our first reading is from the first book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, reading verses 1 to 6. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. And when that happens, God's decree, it will be plain as the sun at high noon. I'll be the God of every man, woman, and child in Israel, and they shall be my very own people. This is the way God put it. They found grace out in the desert, these people who survived the killing. Israel, out looking for a place to rest, met God out looking for them. God told them, I've never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love, and more love. And so now I'll start over with you and build you up again, dear virgin Israel. You'll resume your singing, grabbing tambourines and joining the dance. You'll go back to your old work of planting vineyards on the Samaritan hillsides and sit back and enjoy the fruit. Oh, how you'll enjoy those harvests. The time's coming when watchmen will call out from the hilltops of Ephraim, on your feet, let's go to Zion, go to meet our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is taken from Psalm 118. The sung refrain is found in Voices United, page 837, part two and three. And Lynn will play the refrain. <laughs> God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. There are shouts of joy and deliverance in the hands of the righteous. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. I shall not die but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. God indeed punished me. Open to me the gates.
gates of the temple, but that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God, through it the righteous shall enter. I thank you, for you have answered me. Uh, you, you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, reading verse 34 to 43. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Peter fairly exploded with his good news. It's God's own truth. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you come from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere, among everyone. You know the story of what happened in Judea. It began in Galilee after John preached a total life change. Then Jesus arrived from Nazareth, anointed by God with the Holy Spirit, ready for action. He went through the country helping people and healing everyone who was beaten down by the devil. He was able to do all this because God was with him. And we saw it, saw it all, everything he did in the land of Jew, the Jews and in Jerusalem, where they killed him, hung him from the cross, but in three days, God had him up, alive, and out where he could be seen. Not everyone saw him. He wasn't put on public display. Witness had been carefully handpicked by God beforehand, us. We were the ones there to eat and drink with him after he came back from the dead. He commissioned us to announce this in public to bear solemn witness that he is, in fact, the one whom God destined as judge of the living and dead. But we're not alone in this. Our witness that he is the means to forgiveness of sins is backed up by the witness of all the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as Olaf says, this is a, a new song. I found this on the uh, on the internet when I typed in non-traditional Christmas uh, uh, Easter Easter song. So, so it, this is going to be my first time ever doing this. So uh, it's called "Risen" by Shauna Edwards.
The day that Jesus died in agony upon the bitter cross. They took his body down and laid it in a tomb. His friends believed that everything was lost. But when the third day came, the darkness turned to light. For Mary heard her name and saw the living Christ risen to set the captives free, risen to ransom you and me, to bind up every broken heart, to conquer death and sin, risen to bring us home again. And in that barren place, the world forever changed. For hope was born when Jesus rose that day. And still his wounded hands reveal the love he has for every fallen soul he came to save. And he will come again, and one by one will rise to praise his holy name and see the living Christ risen to set the captives free, risen to ransom you and me, to bind up every broken heart to conquer death and sin, risen to bring us home again. Alleluia, he lives. Alleluia, he is risen to get the cap it's free. Oh, he is risen to ransom you and me, to bind up every broken heart, to conquer death and sin. Risen to bring us home again. Very good. And very fitting. And we have our gospel reading. Let us listen for the word of the Lord from John chapter 20, reading verses 1 to 18. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, gasping for breath. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter. Stooping to look in, he saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen cloths lying there and the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew from the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples went back home. 
but Mary stood outside the tomb, weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her. Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Sir, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. And Jesus said, Mary. Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus said, Don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples. I saw the Master, and she told them everything he said to her. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to start with the, re, the refrain, or I, I guess I'll start with the verse. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. Now I know you know this part. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everyone. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle in us a fire of your love. Take our minds and think through them. 
Take our lips and speak through them. Take our souls and set them on fire. Amen. Well, spring is, I think it's here. I, hopefully the snow won't come back or if it just does briefly. But I know people have been checking their gardens. I, I'm sort of seeing if there's anything surviving, survival of the fittest in my garden or my yard. But we deal with gardens today. We were at the Garden of Gethsemane on Monday, Thursday. And then on the hill of crucifixion, the skull, Golgotha. Then we went to another garden, Joseph's garden, Joseph of Arimathea. That's a garden. And that's where we find the events of this morning. And there's various uh, versions of the, what happened that early morning. And today we look at the version we find in John where uh, Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, traditionally is John, uh, were running to the tomb after Mary had alerted them uh, to the tomb that it was empty. Things were happening. Uh, and that morning, there's a lot of racing going on. It's an exhausting passage because you know, Mary ran to the, tell the disciples, the disciples ran, and we get the race, and uh, John beat Peter in, in getting there. It was uh, quite an exhausting time with all this running. And I find Peter's interesting. Peter goes in and he looks. He doesn't say that much. The other disciple looks, he believes, and then what do they do? They go back home. Like I'm going... Shouldn't they be jumping up and down? Like, what's happening there? But the focus of this passage is Mary, who is still weeping and who looks in. And all now she sees uh, two angels dressed in white, one at the head, one at the feet, sitting. When anybody in Scripture sits, that's always a teaching moment. Jesus sits to teach uh, it is a teaching moment. I should be sitting on my bar stool, which is back there, but uh, to, uh, teaching. But they were telling her that Jesus is risen, like they were giving good news, but she still quite didn't accept the good news. She wasn't ready. And so she saw someone else in the garden, and she thought it was the gardener, as we all know. And she was asking, where have they placed Jesus? She wants to go and tend him. And as we know, he said, Mary. And then she realized who it was through her tears, through the voice. She knew it was Jesus. And Jesus was there with her. The simple uh, element of this whole story with Mary and Jesus, she is looking for Jesus, thinking he's somewhere else but Jesus is there with her. That is the message of Easter. Jesus is with us. Jesus isn't away somewhere distant, but he is with us, with each one of us. And through all the songs and music, it is emphasized, Jesus is with us. Uh, and he is giving us strength as we go day by day. He is there, but sometimes we forget that Jesus is with us, but he is there. And that is the message of Easter. Jesus is with us, and that's what we celebrate. And we're called to live now because he is with us. Because he lives, we live, and we live life fully. Jesus is with us. Glory be to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we give thanks. He is with us. Let us sing the first and fourth verse of the Strife is O'er 159. And it's also on the screen.
hallelujahs this day. Now we have our announcements, and Jana has an announcement. Do you want the microphone down there or up here? Or? And also there's, I think we've got extra sheets at the back too of the announcement. I want to tell you a short story about my cousin. My cousin Caden Blair was born on April 24th, 2002. A few weeks after he was born, it was discovered that he was born with biliary atresia, which means he was missing the major bile ducts in his liver, so the bile could not be drained. At three months old, he was diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver and he was put on the transplant list at three months old. His family was planning his first birthday party, at which time he weighed only 13 pounds, which is only a couple pounds more than the turkey I'm cooking today. <laughs> just to give you an idea, like he was just a little guy. They didn't even know if he would make it to celebrate his first birthday. Three days after his first birthday, on April 27, 2003, he received his gift of life. So, to mark Caden's 20th liverversary, <laughs> to honor his donor, to celebrate life, and to promote organ and tissue donation, I am going for a walk on Saturday, April 22nd. Starting at the Essex Arena to the high school, and then I'm choosing to do the longer walk on to Windsor Regional Hospital Metropolitan Campus. We have partnered with Ronald McDonald House Southwestern Ontario, an amazing charity that Caden's family used nine times over 13 years for a total of 47 nights. So far, we have 120 people who have signed up to do a, the shorter walk and 40 or so of that 120 are doing the half marathon. Caden has lived his life to the fullest, never taking his gift for granted. He's currently facing many terrible health challenges, but he continues to amaze us with his positive outlook and lease on life. That kid just resonates joy and love. He's so giving. So please see me if you would like further information or if you would like to walk or donate. And hopefully I will see you here on Sunday, April 23rd, the day after the walk, if I don't get dead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jana. And from the news that was sent out, we have birthdays on April the 10th, Nathan, on April the 11th, Elaine, then on the 13th, Rachel, on the 15th, Derek, and then on April the 12th, there's an anniversary of Anita and Clive. We just use first names because it goes on YouTube and we want to be very cautious of what is shared on YouTube. Also again, please, a reminder, please be cautious, somebody else. Uh, somebody has gotten a message from me uh, at a meeting to text them back. You know, if you get a message from me, just check out to make sure it's from me. And you can always check that it is. But there's, how shall I say, people not living the best lives out there and causing trouble for us. And we need to be very cautious. Um, any highlights to any announcements people would like to make? Oh, really? I have one announcement. Um, next, uh, I, I, many of you know I sing with the County Classic. We have some concerts coming up uh, 
at the end of April and beginning of May at Harold, Epworth, and Dave Mennonite. But next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're doing a little mini concert uh, because Faith Mennonite Church finally, they bought a new piano that you can actually tune. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we're, they're having a little reception to dedicate the piano next uh, in Faith Mennonite's on Shirk, on Shirk Street and at 3 o'clock. So if anybody wants to come out and get a little taste of what we're singing at, the, uh, at our concerts, please come. Because I won't be here because I'll be up there rehearsing next week. So. <laughs> Any other announcements or highlights? Also, we're needing anybody for our audio-visual team or any, if anybody wishes to contribute any audio-visual things for our, uh, our that, the screen and our display for worship, please feel free to do that. And now we have our offertory where we, bottom line, we offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Let us join in singing God grant Grant us, God, the grace of giving. pray. Living God, you have given us so much in Jesus Christ. Hope, joy, and peace. Above all, you have given us life. What can we give in return? If the whole world were ours, it would not be enough. What little we have, we humbly offer to you. Thousand and thousand of thanks are due, dearest Jesus, unto you. Amen. Amen. I think in uh, respect of the time, we'll have to sing Joy Comes with the Dawn at another time. We'll have to leave that. Oh, hmm? Yeah, yeah, Dawn went fast. Dawn went fast. But I like Four Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we miss Dawn. We now have our prayers. Let us pray. Risen Lord, hear our cry for help. For those surrounded by the shroud of death, for those covered by the mantle of dying, for those hemmed in by illness, visible or veiled, hear our cry for help. For those weighed down with worries, for those carrying the burden of distress, for those overwhelmed by isolation, hear our cry for help. For those who are weary, for those who are tattered and worn, for those who collapse from exhaustion, hear our cry for help. We lift up those who are hurting throughout the world. Be with them, and especially with those in Haiti that are facing those horrible troubles and there's fear be their strength, and may they be aware that you are with them. Loving God, we give you thanks for your blessings to us. We give you thanks that Jesus is with us now to give us strength to help us face this day and the days ahead. That you guide us and lead us. We yield ourselves to you and offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us prepare to go forth by singing Thine is the Glory in Voices United 173. Butterfly, shine bright as the rainbow. Christ is risen. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go with Christ's blessing. Amen. And we sing, I serve the risen Savior.
Amen. Amen.